United Nations releases long-awaited report on Chinese abuses of Uyghur Muslims. On August 31st, the United Nations Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights released its report titled Assessment of Human Rights Concerns in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, People's Republic of China. In 2017, the United Nations started receiving allegations of abuse from non-governmental organizations, think tanks, and media outlets, prompting the investigation. Since then, numerous research reports have been published alleging arbitrary detention, torture, sexual violence, and forced sterilizations, forced labor, and other ill treatment of up to a million people. Years in the making, with attempted blocks and delays by the Chinese government, the report offers a damning assessment of widespread human rights abuses committed against the people of the ethnic Uyghur and other predominantly Muslim minority communities. The UN-led investigation validated many findings of previous reports, including a significant increase in criminal arrests, convictions, and excessively lengthy prison sentences, along with mass referrals of individuals to what China calls, quote-unquote, re-education camps. The report states that China's indicators for identifying persons, quote-unquote, at risk of extremism do not serve as actual and substantive indicators, but merely manifestations of personal choice in matters of religion and cultural preference. China's diplomatic mission in Geneva vehemently opposed the report's findings, and the Chinese government has released its own report to counter that of the United Nations. Many human rights advocates have expressed their disappointment with the absence of the term genocide within the report. Okay, and what took, first of all, why there is an absence of the term genocide? Secondly, why did it take them so long to report, to put this out? This is a very good question. And the question of why it took so long gets into actually a lot of internal politics within the United United Nations that like are on a level that I don't have enough of background to I feel like I could fully explain um wait let me pull up the report I was looking at so I was reading this report by the Associated Press which helped me make a lot more sense of kind of the behind the scenes politics that was going on. So the human rights chief, um, Michelle Blanchlet, um, she has been calling, she, people have been trying to get her to publish this report for months now. They first promised this like wait, back who? year. And then people were like, wait, when are you going to release this report in December? And they're like, Oh, it'll, we're going to publish it soon. We're going to publish it soon. They didn't do it. And this, um, the human rights chief, she basically said, like, if I don't publish this before I leave this position, then I'm a failure. And they published this report yeah. literally minutes before, before the termination of her term, of her term, of, in her position. And she's like, I'm not doing this position anymore. <laughs> minutes, um, minutes before she was, like, leaving out the door. Like, it's amazing. Why, like... Was it a coincidence that it happened minutes before she her her position ended? Like was she no. no? No, okay. So why 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 was it so why was it happening then? Like because she was so much under pressure that that's the only time that she could release it or else she would be like that means like China has so much inf like within the United Nations, China must yes. be pulling a lot of levers to not let this report. By yes. by the way, guys, for people that means China really cares about this report, okay? That they met, that they were so adamant in not letting this report come out, right? So pe for people like, oh, this report shouldn't matter. Like they're gonna keep doing what they're doing. Who gives a crap about that? We weren't finally approving this. If it didn't matter, why would China be try making so much effort in making sure this report, trying to make sure that this report come uh, doesn't come out? So, and we here's a quote. The report, which Western diplomats and UN officials has said has been ready for months, was published with just minutes to go in her four-year term. Four years. She's been, this has been to ready do... to be published for months, and they literally minutes before her job is over, they publish it. Maybe they must. They must have had some influence over her position. Um, amazing. Um, also, guys, like I know a lot of you say, like, why we do? Why do we even need this report? 
um, we already knew what China was doing there. You have no idea how much more credibility this gives that accusation, right? You, you know, the world doesn't deal with just like, oh, news, you know, think journalists, tanks and think tanks and journalists. Like, the, you know, the political world needs a higher degree of validation for things to actually move forward a little bit. And this makes the whole accusation of what China is doing a lot more valid. Like, this is a huge. Okay. So, it this puts is the a heft, big deal. Heft yes. behind it. Yes, yeah. Here's exactly. a quote from um, the what website is this? The Uyghur Human Rights Project. Um, quote, this UN report is extremely important. It paves the way for meaningful and tangible action by member states, UN bodies, and the business community, said World Uyghur Congress President um, Dulkan Issa. Accountability starts now. Quote, this is a game changer for the international response to the Uyghur crisis, said Uyghur Human Rights Project Executive Director Om. Uh, Despite the Chinese government's strenuous denials, the UN has now officially recognized that horrific crimes are occurring. Mm. So it what's interesting is a lot of this report doesn't really um, give that m much more new information. It's basically just validating what we what has already been known and has more of the UN stamp of approval on it. And the validation of their own investigations so that's worth something because i mean the, unfortunately the un is like incredibly politicized in ways that makes me extremely depressed but it's different than it being think tanks doing these reports right or the non-official uyghur tribunal that happened in london a few like last year um that you know, it is important. Like these tribunals are important, but they don't actually have any authority. This obviously has a lot of authority. Um, and I think um, it's important to, wait, where's my notes on this? Shoot. What I thought was really interesting was I was reading some of the report today and it gives recommendations to the business community. So now the UN is explicitly calling upon the just broader global business community to do their own research in their supply chains. The UN actually makes a series of specific recommendations, which involve basically tying in all of these other United Nations bodies and asking them to start taking action. Now, one thing that I think is important to talk about is the lack of this the use of the term genocide armin what are you what do you think about that i don't yeah i was gonna ask you why do you think they're not using the term genocide maybe, okay maybe not you yeah, go on. my my Honestly, guess would be yeah, you go, go first my guess would be not to uh, water down the impact of the word genocide do you know what i mean how would it watering it down i mean there's this would be a, a, because there's no validation that this is, I don't, okay, so they think that if they use it here, and again, I'm not ju justifying this, right? Maybe people will be like, okay, we're calling everything genocide now. So it wouldn't have that, the, the impact that it used to have at some point. I have a contention it. with that though. Because yeah. it wasn't justified. I was just saying, like, maybe. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. There's a huge problem with that way of thinking because of our familiarity with the horrors of the big H, as we call it here for the sake of YouTube. You know, what happened to the Jewish people during H World War II. H O L U. How do you yeah, the big H. I think we all know the what I'm talking H. about. Yeah. Because of how horrific and systematic that was, people now have the false idea that that is our standard for what oh, yeah. is a genocide when actually that is very singular in the history of genocides it's not usually that systematic in actually created into the form of a bureaucracy that's very rare mm -hmm. and so because crimes or systematic attempts to eliminate or reduce certain groups of people don't look like that people think that it doesn't count which actually isn't true based on numerous different definitions of what meets the standard of what is a genocide. So based solely 
on the real and documented attempts of demographic engineering within the Xinjiang region, as found by Chinese internal documents themselves, that is genocide because they are manipulating that group's ability to have children be with their children and raise their children as they see fit with their own culture, with their own language. That itself mm. already meets that standard. It doesn't have to be, yeah, what we saw during the big age. It doesn't have to be mass executions. That's only yeah. one form of it. But I think, um, I don't know. I'm very torn. Part of me thinks that maybe it actually wouldn't be appropriate to include that term in this report. What if I think I'm going to appeal to uh, genocide experts. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't, I think this is like, um, I don't think this is like, oh, it's a big deal, so it must be genocide. Oh, no, it's not that big of a deal, so it must be genocide. I think this is a very legalistic term, and I don't think it's. I don't think if they don't call it genocide, it doesn't mean that they're not taking it seriously, or maybe they're not. Like, it might not necessarily. Maybe, maybe, maybe it does mean that. But I just think like we we don't. We really have to talk to maybe an expert on this whether or not they think it was justified or not justified to call this a genocide yeah um yeah these saying genocide just means targeting a certain com uh, community well they are kind of, i mean if that's the only definition then this means that definite meets that criteria right so yeah. do we have like a legal legal term that yuan uses that is different from the common way that me and you use it like other the rest of us the united that, nations maybe? does have a formalized term there's also yeah. many different formalized terms like oxymoron is saying that we should have a scale for this kind of thing. There actually is a scale. It's kind of similar to how there are like many different definitions of what is fascism. How do we define fascism? How do we rank when a yeah. state is moving more towards fascism? There are many different definitions and criteria for these kinds of things. So it really depends on who you're talking to. Um, but there were lawyers talking about why they believe it's such a failure that this term was not included in the okay. report. And they say this if they report say could it, be. If they say it, if the lawyers uh, who are following this saying that's such a failure, I will jump on that bandwagon and I will call it a failure. But go on. So there was the lawyer who was in charge of the Uyghur tribunal, for example, and they said this report could be dangerous, actually, in the long term if it allows countries that prefer not to act in respect of. Um, the PRC human rights abuses to say something like, oh, well, things in Xinjiang are less than ideal. They've not reached the level of international intervention. Oh, yeah. So they're saying the report came out and it's confirmed, not a genocide, no need for reaction, guys. Let's go home. Like it's bad, but we shouldn't it's bad. get involved. But we, yeah, we only get involved when it's genocide. Okay. Yeah. I see. I can see that. And then, so they're basically, they're coming after, you know, the human rights chief who was in charge of this, um, Blan, uh, Bunchelet, Bunchel I have no idea how to pronounce these names. <laughs> if um, uh, Bunchelet did not agree with any of these determinations, meaning of genocide, she owed survivors, victims, bereaved, and even those doing their best to determine the truth, a duty to say why not. So they're saying, okay, if you didn't think that it was a genocide, why not? Why did you not reach that conclusion? Why did you not use that term that was not specified? Mm. At the same I time, do I don't know. I don't know. I I really have to look more into how the UN defines these things. When, when is their standard of when it's talked about these right. this way? I want to highlight a comment by Satya. Satya is saying, why is China so serious? Even if they open up a gulag, the world will still keep buying Chinese products some uh, negatives of globalization i see such i don't know how much more wrong you could you could be this is like this is the most wrong comment i ever saw you ever had this will definitely um have an impact on china okay this is not black and white you don't it's not either you buy stuff from china or you don't buy stuff from china it's how much stuff you buy from china and how much political influence you let china have okay then more negative um attention china gets is definitely going to have an impact on the level of trade they get and it's going definitely going to have an effect on how average people in different countries look at china and how they vote accordingly and how much support they will give to their politicians to move against the CCP or not. This will have 
serious effects and china knows this china knows this more than you do apparently because they are so eager in trying to spread their propaganda not inside china not just inside china but around the world because they know how much soft power matters when it comes to geopolitics and international affairs it matters so much and it impacts everything and it impacts how much pressure they could inflict on other countries and uh, the, the less of a positive opinions people have around around the world in china the more politicians can weaponize that against the ccp this matters so much like it's not like oh people are just going to buy something no it's, it doesn't work like that it, it, if it matters for saudi arabia if it matters for iran you think it, it's not going to matter for uh, china it's definitely going to matter for china even uh, especially uh, especially a country like china which relies so much on international trade mm -hmm. it matters for them even more than other countries and the un made explicit recommendations for businesses to basically engage with them as less least as possible okay but i actually pulled up the un definition of genocide also, it's really short. just a second just a second and also there's so much right now there's a lot of push because of these negative attentions china is getting both by people and politicians uh, and um and also political experts to diversify you cannot not buy stuff from china you're always going to buy from china but you're going to try to buy less from china they're trying to diversify to korea to vietnam especially to india to the philippines to many this the you know the, the for example you know who bet on people not diversifying putin putin bet on that and they and now like now you can see how much in such a short amount of time everybody has lit a fire under their ass to try to diversify their gas out of russia putin assumed like they're going to keep buying uh, gas from me forever but now you go see, and, nuclear sorry and also also china is also witness witnessing this witnessing like see how much how much more when you when you behave like this when you behave in a way that the uh international community is, is not happy with how much motivation it, there will be to diversify out of buying stuff from you even when it comes at a huge cost to their own economy this much motivation must scare china to like okay this is serious the world liberal order has less tolerance than i thought they did have right so this is that's why it's important for people to continue um crushing putin but anyways go. you you found the definition so the united nations convention on the prevention of punishment in the crime of genocide article 2. in the present convention genocide means any of the following acts committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national eth eth ethnical <laughs> ethnical racial or religious group as such a killing members of the group b causing serious bodily or mental harms to member of the group c deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part c impose d imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group and e forcibly transferring children of the group to another group well they're doing that yeah they're they're fitting many of these criteria yeah um at minimum three out of five hmm arguably right, let's let's read the comments and then get to the next news yeah d is saying china has denied this every step of the way even with the existence of the camps with proven by satellite imaging yeah apparently some of the camps have been wound down yeah. i've been seeing reading some reports that some of the forced labor camps have been wound down but instead they're moving from that structure to more incarceration structure so it's yeah and moving from an re-education framing, supposed vocational training, to just straight up incarcerating people imprisonment style um, for the crime of having a beard and using social media while being an ethnic minority. <laughs> um, do you have any other thoughts on this story or should we move to the next one? Uh, I, we can move, but you, you start two other comments. Oh, shoot, I forgot. <laughs> um, uh, Higgs Boson is saying, why are gray zone type leftists trying to whitewash this arm? And I think you would be able to give very good commentary on because this. Because they're all, what, it, what do they mean by gray zone leftists, for those who don't know? Tankies. A special, unique type of 
commies that even other commies hate. <laughs> so the worst of all people, basically. Um, no, seriously, they're horrible. Um, True. No, I yeah, I think because gray zone type left, let's just call them tankies, okay? Tankies like everything, and they don't, they're not even about communism anymore, okay? Their entire ideology is anti liberal or anti West, anti America, including being pro Iranian regime, apparently. Oh, <laughs> that's, how they, that's how they look at things. Anything that is anti the United States um, is good. That's how they think. Oh, Susie, your profile, your avatar is Babak. I think because you're using Babak's computer. Um, wait, can I change her avatar? No. Um, also, another comment uh, Susie starred before she got, went. Uh, Gamer Boy saying, I think 35 people are watching, much less uh, commenting live. Uh, I don't know. I don't have money, but I think uh, comment sections is only for members. I just no, wanted to say that comment sections are not only for members. We just have a lot of people who were gifted memberships, so it looks like it because everyone has badges and it's green. But no, yeah. the comment section is for everyone, and we're happy to have you, Gamer Boy. So thank you for joining us. You yeah, can do this you. free of charge. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.